This is part one of lesson 10-4, all about inscribed angles. So previously in chapter 10, we've been talking about circles and different parts of circles. And then we started talking about um, central angles in a circle and the measure of arcs, minor arcs and major arcs. And then of course, semicircles, which are exactly 180 degrees. Um, so now we're gonna build on that a little bit. And now it starts getting more complicated. We're getting deeper into circles, but um, don't don't overthink any of this because it all is very simple as long as you pay attention. It, don't overthink it. Okay, so inscribed angles are angles that are basically their vertex is on the circle, right? So here's a picture. This angle right here, its vertex is on our circle. So it's an inscribed angle. The vertex touches the circle. Before we were talking about angles, that vertex, the vertex was here at the center of the circle. Now it's like we've, it's a rubber band. We've stretched that angle all the way back and it went from being in the middle here to now it's been stretched back to actually on the other side of the circle. So what I want you to understand about that is that um, first of all, whenever we have an uh, inscribed angle, um, it creates an intercepted arc. So the intercepted arc is the portion of the circle that lies between the angle, right? So think of this, I just my goofy visual self, I always think of an intercepted angle, sorry, an inscribed angle as somebody holding a flashlight. And I've used that before, but if you're standing at point E and you're holding a flashlight, and it's right here, and it's gonna shine, this direction, right? So where it shines here, this is the intercepted arc. This arc is created from this inscribed angle, okay? So what the rule is here, what you're learning in this lesson, is that the measure of this angle, in a little bit, the measure of this angle is half the measure of this arc. Right? So how did I get the measure of the arc? Well, remember the measure of an arc is the same as the measure of its central angle. So if I drew two lines here from D to G and F to G, created these two, this is a central angle, this angle right here. So whatever measure this is, this arc is the same measure, right? Well, if we created a new angle all the way back here, it's further back, so it's skinnier. Right, so how do I know the measure of this angle? It's half the measure of the intercepted arc. So if this arc was 80 degrees, that means the central angle is 80 degrees, and it means this inscribed angle right here is 40 degrees. So an intercepted arc is double the inscribed angle. The inscribed angle is half the intercepted arc. Central angle is the same as the arc. Inscribed angle is half the arc. Okay, so here's the rule on that. So pause this, write that down if you need to. An inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So let's do a few examples of that. All right, exercises. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Find each measure. So here we're finding the measure of arc AC, which is this guy right here. And just to be annoying <laughs> for this video, I'm going to kind of highlight each inscribed angle so you can see its intercept arc. So we know that this inscribed angle is 36 degrees. The intercepted arc is double that. The angle is half the measure of the arc. So what's double 36? 72. So this arc right here is 72 degrees. The angle across from it is half that. The arc is 72. So the measure of arc AC is 72 degrees. Okay, let's look at the next one. The measure of angle N. So here it tells us this arc LK is 62 and the inscribed angle across from it is half that. Right, so this little angle over here is half whatever this is. So 62 divided by two equals 31 degrees. The measure of angle N equals 31 degrees, half the intercepted arc. All right, next one. Here's a little bit larger, right? Here's the uh, angle, the intercepted angle, straight line here, straight line here. 
it meets up with my circle here and here at points R and Q. So all of this is the intercepted arc, right? If we were to shine this flashlight here, it would touch all of this circle. All that's the intercepted arc. So if the angle is half the arc and the angle is 113, what's the arc going to be? Well, 113 times 2 is 226 degrees. This whole arc right here is 226. And that makes sense because it's like two-thirds of our circle, right? It's over half of our circle. So it makes sense. The measure of that arc is over half the circle, over half of 360 degrees. So the measure of arc QSR, this whole thing, is half the inscribed angle it's created by. Sorry, double, sorry. The angle is half of the arc. The arc is double the angle. Clearly the arc is a lot bigger than the angle. So this is 113, double it, and you get 226. All right, number four. Number four, each measure. U and T. Okay, so both of these right here apply to this drawing. So this is where it gets a little interesting because you kind of have to like pay attention to how you're looking at this. So we need to find the measure of angle U and the measure of angle T, right? So there's two different things going on here. First of all, angle U is this angle right here. So we're going to try and find the measure of that angle, right? What we know is that this angle V is 30 degrees and it projects, here's it's this inscribed angle is 30 degrees and it projects onto this arc right here, right? So this intercepted arc comes from this 30 degree angle and the arc is double the angle. So this is 60 degrees. And also angle U is an intercepted arc that creates, sorry, intercepted angle. <sighs> Angle U is an inscribed angle that creates this intercepted arc. So both angles V and U share the same intercepted arc. So U and V have to be the same size. Angle U has to be half of this arc, which is 30 degrees. So 60 divided by two equals 30 degrees. Measure of angle U is 30, okay? In this same picture now, we want to find the measure of angle T, this guy right here, okay? Well, how do we do that? I'm going to highlight it here. Angle T is the inscribed angle, and then there's that intercepted arc, right? Well, again, when two inscribed angles make up the same intercepted arc, so angle W here, this angle right here, Angle W has this inscribed, uh, intercepted arc, and angle T has the same intercepted arc. They overlap, they share the same arc. So if they share the same arc, and the arc is double the measure of the angle, their angle measures have to be the same, right? So 3x plus 4, the measure of angle T, has to be the same as the measure of angle W, 2x plus 9. I hope you guys are able to follow along with that. Okay, there's lots of things overlapped here. If somebody stood here at T and shined a flashlight and somebody stood here at W and shined a flashlight, those flashlights both hit the edge of our circle in the same spot. So if, if the measure of this arc was 20, let's say 30, this angle would have to be half that, 15, right? If this is 30, then this angle has to be half that. So it would also have to be 15. These two angles have to be the same size when they share the same intercepted arc. So that's what we're solving for. Um, minus 2x from both sides, minus 4 from both sides. We get x equals 5, but it doesn't ask us to solve for s. x, it asks us to solve for the measure of angle t. t is, what is it, 3x plus 4. 3 times 5 plus 4 equals 15 plus 4 equals 19 degrees. So the measure of angle T is 19 degrees. Okay, and if the measure of angle T is 19 degrees, then W has to be 19 degrees. And the arc has to be double that, right? So the arc would be 38 degrees. Okay, when we were looking over here, this angle U 
projects onto this arc, and this inscribed angle V projects onto the same intercepted arc. Since they both share the same arc, they're both the same measure. Hopefully that's making sense, okay. All right, and then two more here. Six and seven, same kind of drawing. You gotta be able to separate it out. It's confusing when you look at it, but be able to separate it out. All right, first of all, we wanna find the measure of angle A. Angle A is here, so it projects onto this big intercepted arc here. Here's angle A, and it tells us it's 6y minus 2. We also see that angle D projects onto that same arc, right? So it would have to be the same measure as angle A since they both share the same intercepted arc. So that angle D is 5y plus 8. So 6y, is it 5y? Is it 6y minus 2, angle A, has to be equal to angle D, 5y plus 8. And I can solve for y and then plug y in to solve for angle A. Minus 5y on both sides. Add 2 to both sides. y equals 10. So then we plug that in here. 6 times 10 is 60. Minus 2 is 58. So the measure of angle A is 6 times 10 minus 2 equals 58 degrees. Okay, and then looking at that same picture, the measure of angle C. So now we're looking at this angle right here projected onto this intercepted arc. So this angle right here, okay? And is there another, another angle that shares this same intercepted arc? Yeah, angle B. This guy right here projects onto that the same exact arc, right? Whether it's angle C, the orange guy, or angle B that I kind of highlighted in black pen, they're both projecting onto the same intercepted arc. So they both have to be the same size. So 6x minus 3, has to be the same size as 7x minus 11. 6x minus 3 is equal to 7x minus 11. I can solve for x, plug it back in for the measure of angle C. Minus 6x on both sides, plus 11 on both sides. So x is equal to 8. And then the measure of angle C again is 7x minus 11. So 7 times 8 minus 11. 56 minus 11 is 45. Measure of angle C is 45 degrees. Okay, so hopefully that's making sense. When you look at a circle, they love to kind of overlap all this stuff and get you real confused, but just pay attention. Focus on what the problem at hand is asking you for. If it's asking us for C, we're just focused on C. I notice that this arc AD is the intercepted arc of angle C and it's the intercepted arc of angle B. <coughs> so if they both have the same intercepted arc and an inscribed angle is half of its intercepted arc, then they both have to be the same measure. So I set them equal to each other, solve for X, plug X in to solve for angle C. Please let me know if you have any questions on any of this, I will be happy to clarify and stay tuned for part two of this lesson.